Peaches with Livingston and Ted Jellet too. And our host, Fitz and Lando, and he brings it to you. <laughs> Creature Features and all creatures. gotten into her. My goodness, it must be that time of the month with... What? You are not actually going there, are you? Oh, God, no, you silly person. Now allow me to finish my sentence. As I was attempting to convey, it must be that time of the month when Netflix replaces her favorite shows with new ones, which she'll likely not fancy. Weirdo. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The capricious chap with the charming chin hair would be my butler, Mr. Livingston. And the rapidly rampaging rascal in the background is my typically timid tenant, Tangella. Have we an incredible show for you tonight? First up, we'll be joined by our fabulous guest, Academy Award-winning thespian Christian Bale. You'll remember him Negative. from ba What? You mean Christian Bale? There is an issue with the airlines. Well, just put him on another airline. There is an issue with all of them. What in God's name is going on? I'll explain later. Right. Well, that would solve the mystery of why Tangella is having a conniption fit. Onward. So it appears it shall be yet another family night here at the mansion, and when you're stuck indoors with your family, there's no better cure for that inevitable cabin fever than by watching a jolly good sci-fi film. Right, Livingston? But tonight we'll be watching 1961's The Phantom Planet. This movie does not star Christian Bale but it does star Dean Fredericks, Colleen Gray, and features Richard Keel dressed as a monster. I've seen this one before, but have completely forgotten the plot, so it should be just as enjoyable for me tonight as it likely was the first time. And it should be a rather fun film for the entire family. So don't go away, because it's going to be another night of family feud fright right here on Creature Features. And count yourself lucky that you won't have to contend with this Tasmanian devil as I will. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to Creature Features. It's going to be one of those fun nights. You know why? We don't have a guest. Well, we, we sort of have a guest. We have Tangella. She's like a guest. She's guest-like. She makes us guess a lot. But uh, we were supposed to have Christian Bale. He bailed on us. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to write him a very strongly worded letter. He's, he's a man of short words. You know, he's starting to take after her now. I don't know why. So, uh, anyways, we're going to watch a movie with you, and you're going to watch it with us. It's going to be fun. We're going to watch um, The Phantom Planet, correct? Indeed. You know, he's seen this movie 20 times, and not because we've shown it 20 times, but because um, he, he does like some clippings on it to take out all the naughty bits. How many naughty bits could be in a 1961 film? You would be quite surprised. Mm. Anyways, this film is about space and midgets or little people as we often little call little people little putians on a planet so it's it's kind of like gulliver's travels right in space a an interesting analogy right right so you know if the kids are watching tonight you, you're not gonna have to cover their eyes and you probably won't have to cover their ears because livingston took out all the four letter words right 
he claims he did. How about you? How are you doing? You've calmed down a bit. She was on a bit of a rampage. A rampage you, is a good description. Well, you know, you might have informed her that the guest was not coming prior to our recording the commencement. You know, then I she did. Could, she could get it out of her system. Oh, you did? Oh, all right. All right, well, we're going to have a fun night. You guys going to have a fun night, but we got to roll the film, right? Right, right. All right, off we go. The Phantom Planet, 1961. See you soon. Since the splitting of the atom only a few decades ago, and through his God-given genius of science, man, at last, has succeeded in penetrating further and further into the unknown vastness of space. The moon has become the launching base for advanced exploration. From this pivotal point, astronauts, at the risk of their lives, set out to conquer nature's mysterious forces. Yet many questions remained unanswered. What is his Earth in relation to the inconceivable number of other worlds? Is his speed truly the fastest, his achievements the greatest, or is he a mere unimportant piece of driftwood floating in the vast ocean of the universe? Could there be life similar to our own on other planets? Is it not possible that atmospheric conditions of relative environments control their shapes and forms? If so, would they be giants, or could perhaps the opposite be true? Could their intellect have reached a scientific level far above man's dreams? What then will the future reveal if this story you are about to witness is only the beginning? Pegasus 3, March 16, 1980. Captain Leonard Pilot, Lieutenant Webb Navigator. This is the seventh and last day of space reconnaissance research, Flight 361 from United States Air Force Lunar Base 1. We are 21,000 miles from base, bearing at 270 degrees, two, three minutes. Azimuth at plus. 46 degrees, 46 degrees, 50 oh minutes, ecliptic. On routine successive approximation by trajectory computer using data from the space position recorder. It's quiet and lonely out here. And frankly, we'll be happy to get back to that dreary old moon. We're almost a degree off trajectory, Captain. Equipment checks okay. Must be an outside acceleration force. Something approaching fast. I'm setting up auto evasive pattern. A large planetoid object is on a direct collision course with us. We are under 11 G's exterior acceleration and have no control whatsoever.
Just incredible. Two ships missing in less than a month. Nothing within thousands of miles of their position. And yet they crash into something that appears suddenly on our radar, big enough to be a planet. And then the next instant it disappears. It's against all theories of space. You get the same reports from bases two and three? It appeared for a second or two, then vanished completely. A ship is on a routine flight. Controls, rockets, everything in order. And then, all of a sudden... Yes? General Gibson for Colonel Lansfield from Earth headquarters. Stand by. Colonel Lansfield? Lansfield, what's all the trouble up there? General, I can't tell you any more than what was in that report this morning. You're certain the rockets crashed? I am. We have their last log entry through our recording reproduction unit. Now, General, I've listened to it over and over. It tells what happened, but not how and why. What do you suggest? I don't know, General. No doubt the rocket's destroyed. We don't know what we're looking for. This mysterious planet seems to come and go at such speeds, it's impossible to track. Phantom planet, Lansfield. You're a little old to think that, aren't you? This is a capable base, General, run by capable men. Now, there's something out there that isn't supposed to be. All right, all right, take it easy. Send another reconnaissance with Chapman. Chapman? I need him for the Mars project. If this phantom planet thing isn't cleared up, there won't be any Mars project. Send him. Yes, sir. Ask Chapman to report. Yes, sir. Captain Chapman, report to the Colonel. <laughs> I've been testing the pressure equipment for the Mars project. Forget about that now, Chapman. You leave tomorrow morning. The general wants someone with your experience. I don't know whether to feel flattered or not. What exactly will I be looking for? A floating space monster? This is no joke, Frank. I wish it were. Sorry, sir. You know how rumors move around the space. Well, that's one of the things we hope that you'll dispel. Well, you're the colonel. I'll take a crack at anything once. And that's about all you'll get, Frank. One crack. Eighteen thousand miles out at two seven zero degrees azimuth and four seven degrees ecliptic. Speed four point six miles per second. Check. Computer guidance on. Ability course on. Directional rocket support off. Directional rocket starboard off. Set to automatic. Check. That does it, Captain. We can relax a bit now. Takeoff's always the same. My heart pounds like a sledgehammer. Yeah, mine too. How about the screen? Never fails to fascinate me from up here. You know, Captain, every year of my life, I grow more and more convinced that the wisest and best is to fix our attention on the good and on the beautiful. If you'll just take the time to look at it. Here's yeah, some guy, McConnell. Lunar Base 1 to Pegasus 4. Lunar Base 1 to Pegasus 4. Can you read me? This is Pegasus 4 to Lunar Base 1. This is Lieutenant McConan. Colonel Lansfield for Captain Chapman. Chapman standing by. Anything out there, Frank? Nothing, Colonel. It's almost too quiet. Well, keep alert. And don't waver off your course one degree, unless you think you're on to something. And if you do get on to something, report at once. Yes, sir. Pegasus 4 to Lunar Base 1. Over. Out. I hope whatever was out there is gone now. <laughs> What's our elapsed time from base? 14 hours, 22 minutes, and 30 seconds. You could stay up here another 14 hours and still see nothing. Even 1,400 hours. That's about all we can do, though. Are you sure we're still on course? Why? Well, I have an idea. Turn to 278 degrees azimuth. 047 degrees ecliptic. Yes, sir. Changing course to 278 degrees azimuth, hold 47 degrees ecliptic. 
Lansfield tells us to charter the same course Pegasus 3 took. Well, that's fine, but I don't think we'll get anywhere. If this strange planet dashes about like it's supposed to, it figures we won't find it around here. So we're changing course. Lightning never strikes twice in the same place. Precisely. You with me? Like I said, you're the captain. I'll Thanks. take a new reading. Thanks, Ray. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Family Night on Creature Features, The Phantom Planet. You know, I like this film. I, I think we should show it every week. It would be nice. It would be yeah. rather tedious. Every other week. Something like that. Anyways, you know, it's not often you get to watch a film about like this phantom asteroid thing that disappears and comes back. And you know, there's some death in this one. You know, I was suggesting before that maybe this would be a family film, but maybe it's not. There's death. And there's, destruction. There's death and family. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to get back to that film in a minute, but uh, what's new, Mr. Livingston? Nothing much. Everything is running like a well-oiled machine. You know, we get lots of inquiries about, you know, how this place runs. I mean, the, the staff. He, he's not the only one here who does the work, and she certainly doesn't do anything. But uh, he's, he's got an actual staff beneath him. Yes, yeah, so we have a chef cook. Chef? And his name is Maurice. Maurice, excellent cook. In fact, he's cooking for us right now because we have dinner late around here. She's so picky. You know, sometimes she cooks her own food and she doesn't do a good job. Who else? Chauncey the gardener. Chauncey the gardener, is he still around? He is, he runs the garden staff. The, you know, the poor man is almost 100 years old. 102. Oh, I think he should be retiring and fishing something. He refuses. All right, and who cleans the toilets? The chambermaids. The chambermaids. That's why they call them chambers, right? Indeed. Right, like the, the loo. Somebody cleans the loo. He cleans the toilets. You've seen him do it. Well, you know, sometimes there's like he fills in as an emergency chambermaid and he puts on the thing, the smock. It's fun to watch. Who are we talking about? You. Oh, indeed. I've seen you watch it walking down a hallway with a plunger and a bucket. One has to do everything when one is in charge. He does everything. All right, what do you think? Should we get back to this film? If you wish. All right, back to Phantom Planet when Tangela goes click. Uh, you could go nuts out here just waiting for something to happen. You seem pretty much at ease. Well, I figure it's just the same as fishing. Got to be patient and wait. Electrostatic meter's going haywire. Lunar Base 1 to Pegasus 4. Can you read me? Over. Pegasus 4 to Lunar Base 1. We read you. Over. You are completely off course, Pegasus 4. Check your position immediately. E-computer and spectrometer out. Pegasus 4 to Lunar Base 1. We are aware of being off course. Cannot explain at present. We are entering a heavy magnetic field. Several instruments are out and I'm afraid others are going. Give us our exact position. Over. Pegasus 4, you are... Do not hear you, Lunar Base 1. Over. Changing to the manual control. Meteor! Fast. What about the infrared detector? 
That's out too. The thing we can do is turn it 90 degrees to the shower's path. More meteors are coming, it's our only chance. That will be to 311 degrees azimuth and minus 12 degrees ecliptic. Here they come. This is it. Those are ionized trails. They'll persist for a while. Well, let's hope for no stragglers. Are these instruments out? There won't be any way to tell if they're coming from another direction. The trick now is to get back to the moon. I think we'll make it. Yeah. Okay, Ray, let's go through a tight B check. Right. Cabin pressure? 20 coming up. Retro port? Positive. Retro starboard? Positive. Main circuit one. Negative. Main two. Negative. Now let's try the auxiliaries. Main one. Negative. Main two. That's not in the circuits. No, the meteors must have smacked into the propulsion elements. Our feed lines. Yeah, we're lucky. Well, there's only one way to find out. Looks like it. Yeah. There's one thing sure. What's that? They knew what they were doing when they forced us to go through those space drills dozens of times. If I remember correctly, you had a different opinion. <laughs> okay, don't rub it in.
With all respect to the Colonel, sir, I don't think it's any use. Keep working that radar and keep working it until we locate Chapman. Yes, sir. He's got to be out there somewhere. He just has to be. Lieutenant Captain Frank Chapman, pilot, Pegasus Four. My ship is being drawn toward an asteroid. Instruments completely out of operation. Navigator McConan, lost. I cannot read my position. I'm going to try to land. I don't think I'll make it. If I do, I'll continue recording. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. You know, we're going to do that letter thing because, you know, even though it's family night, we should still do letters, right? Indeed. Letters are important. You guys write them to us, and if we didn't read them, she would, like, use them as birdcage liner. She does that with the old ones, but she'll do it with new ones, too, if we don't read them quickly. So, you got mail? Red letters. A red let. Oh, this is typed with red ribbon. It's a red ribbon. From Randy Fleming in San Francisco. Thank you for typing, Randy. I have such a difficult time reading scripts. All right. He goes, Dear Vincent, Tangella, and Mr. Livingston, please excuse my terrible letter margins. They're perfect. 
Anyway, I love watching your show. Movies, interview, humor. I did watch a show on a Saturday night many years ago when host Bob Wilkins presented the first time West Coast TV airing of Night of the Living Dead. Me and my cousins watch while smoking. Can I say that? I believe so. We're in California. Smoking medical marijuana. But I digress. I'm an old man now and have a few things to excite me. And I would, however, just once love to see a close-up view. Uh, I cannot read this. This is terrible. He's got a foot fetish and he wants to see a feet. Well, you know, no. Randy, you know, you're an old man. Uh, I think you're a little bit, you know, on that uh, weird side, too. Um, I'm going to skip that and we'll go, uh, do, 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 do. just a confession. Uh, love the household help interactions in this week's feature, The Frozen Ghost. My best to you and yours, Randy Fel Fleming. Postscript, please kindly describe, disregard my silly Tangela Podiatry thing. We will, and hopefully she will too. Or else she's going to send you a letter bomb. We've got your address. She'll pull it out of a birdcage and send you a gift that you will not like. Thanks for writing, Randy. Next stop. We have an email. How do you know his email? This could have been nicely folded into a stomped envelope. He doesn't know. Oh, you opened it though, didn't you? I downloaded it. Ah, all right. Let's see. This is from Ryan J. He does not say where. All right. Hey, Creature Features. Too bad Vincent is British. Otherwise, he'd be a great presidential candidate for the 2020 election. You know, they could change the rules for me. Right? I hope not. Well, they did, they did in the music business. No, typically, you know, I was quite young when I started in the music business. I was not an adult yet. So they changed some rules for me, so I'm told. Love the show. Just discovered it on YouTube, and I'm working through the back episodes. And please be nice to put upon Livingston. You know, he... He gets trouble from her, but he's treated quite well here. He's like, you know, the big shot. He's the boss. So we treat him quite nice. Thanks for writing, Ryan. Last one. Last one. You know, we should start doing four, especially on family nights, because I don't have much to talk about with you guys. I mean, you know, when I have a guest sitting in the chair, it's like chat, chat, chat. We've all got things to talk about. He just complains. And she sits there and does nothing. Well, says nothing. All right. Hi, Creature Features from Henry Sam Meyer in Austin, Texas. I like Austin. I've been there twice. All right. Here are some scientific reasons for watching horror movies and Creature Features as written by my doctor. One, you can burn nearly 200 calories while watching a horror movie. You know, I've watched now 173 horror movies on this show, and I have burned nothing. In fact, I've gained a few from the popcorn. Two, it enhances brain activity. It's made him smarter. Doubtful. Or more of a smart aleck. Three, it can help with anxiety. Well, maybe. Not Night of the Living Dead, though. That one gives me nightmares still. Four, it boosts your immune system. Uh, I think he's just getting silly with us. Five, it's good for your relationship or relationships. You know, I used to have relationships, like six at a time. That's what happens when you tour. Uh, seven, it can kill your stress. Isn't that the same as number three, it can help with your anxiety? I think you're, you're doubling up here. All right, thank you for your weekly broadcast. It's helping solve my problems. Please keep up the broadcast so I can maintain good mental health. Well, you know, I don't think this is going to help most people, Henry, but if it helps you, that makes me happy, and that's what counts. Thanks for writing. That's it. That is it. That is it. If you'd like to send us a letter, send it to the email address you see appearing down here, or if you want to send it in the post in an envelope typed with a red ribbon, send it to the address you see down here. We're going to get back to the Phantom Planet, and when we come back, it's going to be no guess. It's going to be us again, right? Mm. Apologies. See you soon.
about how things are going. Meteor? You are completely off course, Pegasus 4. Check your position immediately. Lunar Base 1 to Pegasus 4. Can you read me? Frank, your airline's broken. Navigator McConan. Ray, Ray. Lieutenant McConan. I'm going to try to land. What exactly will I be looking for? A floating space monster? No joke, Chaplain. I wish it were. Trial. You must take him to Cecil. a lot of step forward.
call the prisoner. Bring in the prisoner. Stand here, in front of our leader and our judge. Is the prisoner from another world ready to hear the charges against him? Charges? What charges? I will ask the questions. Are you ready to stand trial? It seems I have no choice. First, I want to know what I'm charged with. We'll let you know in time. What are you called? Chapman. Frank Chapman. What is your occupation in the world from which you come? I'm a captain in the Air Force of the United States, a country on Earth, space exploration wing. But you must know about us. You speak our language. We do not speak it. But here on Rayton. Rayton? Yes, Rayton, the name of our planet. Here we are able to translate all languages through voice tone waves. Why all these explanations? Let us go on with the charges. You're right, Heron. This is no time for explanations. Man from Earth, you are accused of causing injury to one of our people. I thought I was being attacked and I defended myself. I didn't want to come to your world. I lost control of my ship. It was like being pulled toward your planet by a enormous gravitational force. You were, when you came into our path of travel. Path of travel. Phantom planet. We managed just in time to control your landing by releasing the pressure in our space warp. I don't understand. There are many things you will not understand here. Maybe in time you shall. In time? That is correct. The jury will now vote and find you guilty or not guilty for inflicting injury on a Rayton man. I find you guilty as charged. You are now a free subject of Rayton. The jury is dismissed. That is all. You are now a free subject of Rayton. That is not all. Listen, I don't know what kind of a place this is, but you must have some kind of law here. This planet pulled me to it. I didn't come here by choice. But being here, you cannot be permitted to leave. We must keep our security at any cost. So, I must pronounce you guilty. No penalties will be lodged against you. But you must become a subject of Rayton. Trial is concluded. Nothing is concluded. What is this? First I'm found guilty of something that's not my fault, and then I'm set free. Well, free to go where? Back to my world six inches tall? Don't worry. No harm will come to you. I'm Liara, Sesam's daughter. I'll show you to your quarters. Well, come. We'll talk on the way. What has happened to me? You mean your size? Well, our atmosphere, together with some acceleration from our gravitational control, has reduced you to normal. Normal? Normal for us. You see, everything here is in proportion to our planet's size. We know several worlds that have creatures larger or smaller according to the size of their world. Do you feel any different? No, but it's not exactly funny to think that someone on Earth could carry me about in their pocket. Oh, well, that would never happen. The oxygen in your atmosphere would restore you immediately to your regular size. But either way, it wouldn't matter. You'll never see your world again. Styling for
for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Now, this film, he just breathes the air and he shrinks. Uh, imagine how less complicated Honey, I Shrunk the Kids could have been if they'd used the same technique where they just breathe special air instead of having that giant machine. I don't know. Welcome back. Hey, I'm confused about this film because, you know, just breathing the air makes you tiny. I bet there's a, another planet that has, like, air that if you breathe it, you become giant. It's possible. I don't know. Anyways, we're watching this film. We're having family night. Our guest uh, bailed on us. You know, I can't blame him. He's, he's tried to explain this to me, and I, I guess there's some issues going on. So we won't worry about Christian. We'll get him next time, maybe, if he says yes again. No, he doesn't think he will. And Tangelo's got a big skull. What's up with that? The big skull, Why? You know, typically she has real skulls with her, like this one, you know, human skulls. This is obviously styrofoam because, you know, I can hear it making that sound. Do the sound. Right. That's a good sound. All right. So uh, what, are we, what are we doing? What's up? What's the dinner? Chateaubriand. Chateaubriand. I like Veggies Chateaubriand. for her. That's Seemed. all she eats. She eats no meat. Never touches meat. You've never eaten any meat? But, you know, for somebody who likes lopping off heads, it's you, you think that she might like meat or be a cannibal. The propensity for bloody things. Vegetables. Well, you know, if you were a cannibal and you only ate vegetables, that would mean you're a vegetable. A vegetarian. No, a vegetable. When, if, if one's a cannibal and they eat vegetables, then they are a vegetable, right? They're a vegetarian. You know, you're not very good at improv, are you? I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about vegetarianism and cannibalism mixed together to be one thing. That's impossible. You're no fun. All right. Well, let's get back to this film. And when we come back, uh, I'm going to explain something to him for a change. So you guys stay with us. You stay with us. And uh, don't break your head, Tangela. We've got to finish the episode tonight. All right. Off we go. See you soon. Nothing yet. No, sir. No contact for two days. I'll wait another 24 hours. Then, with or without orders, I'm sending out a search party. You wanted to see me? Yes. Will you excuse me? We must talk about your future. Your future on Rayton. My future on Rayton? I want to talk about getting back to my world, back to Earth. I'm afraid that is impossible. You might as well accept your fate, your fate of being one of us. And being one of us, you must be productive in one way or another. Well, what is it you want me to do? You must help us to keep spaceships from your world from landing here. But that's my only hope of getting back. Forget about it. Two ships in my unit disappeared. Did they crash here? Unfortunately, yes. They were pulled into our strong gravitational field. Well, so was I. Yes, but luckily, we were aware of your approach and lowered the power on our gravity field. I don't get it. In many ways, you're hundreds of years ahead of our science. Yet you live in such a primitive manner. It may not be as odd as it seems. It's true that our technology may be much further advanced than yours, but then strange thing happened. Well, what was that? We had machines do all our work. People on Raton became completely free of all labor, practically of all responsibilities. Our people became soft and lazy. They did not know how to cope with their free time. 
they've started to fight amongst themselves. That's very interesting. Many people on Earth are beginning to face the same problem. Too much free time, too little work. Mm. Problem not at all unique in the history of the universe. Well, what happened on Rayton? Our forefathers then made a wise decision. They returned to, as you say, our primitive ways. The Raytons again had to toil for their living. They became much stronger, much happier, much more valuable. But you didn't forsake all of your scientific achievements. No, we retained the secret of the gravity control for our survival in space and the secret of our food production for our survival on this barren planet. You sacrificed advancement for this. Sesame rules us and we are content. Now, can't we get on with this, Sesame? Aaron is hasty. We all are. Our lives have been changed so much. I would like you to become acquainted with our ways. Later, you may choose a wife. With Liara or Zeta. Zeta cannot speak. But she is a fine woman. Well, between the two, it would be difficult to make a choice. It is no problem. You may take your time. But once you've made your choice, remember, it must not be taken lightly. You must be hungry. Come with me. They are. Go now and learn our ways. And perhaps you may help us with our problems. You can decide about this later. Now you need to eat and rest. This is good. What is it? Well, I think it's the equivalent of your breadfruit. We made it chemically for you, since nothing grows here on this planet. Oh, here. Drink this. It's good for you, and it'll help to make you rest. You need it. You say nothing grows here. Well, then how do you exist? Well, our bodies are so constructed that we need very little food because of the air we breathe. Feeling better now? I hope so. Yes. But I'd like to get out of here. You're a strange one, Frank Chapman. I'm a strange one. What about everybody else? And don't call me Frank Chapman. My name is Frank Chapman. Two words. Yes. Frank Chapman. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be so rough. It's just that well, this is so new to me. You know what I'd like to do if I had a choice? What? I'd like to return to my ship. Well, that's impossible. Then you see, I'm still a prisoner. Not at all. You're free to go anywhere here on Rayton. Except to my ship. Your rocket is no longer on this planet. It was sent off last night while you were sleeping. I cannot read my position. I'm going to try to land. I don't think I'll make it. If I do, I'll continue recording. This is Captain Frank Chapman, pilot of Pegasus Support. My ship is being drawn toward an asteroid. The instrument's completely out of operation. Navigator McConan, lost. Unidentified object on screen. This must be Chapman's ship, Colonel. Certainly has all the indications and all the characteristics of a spaceship. And no other unit of ours is scheduled for flight in this area. Any contact? None, Colonel. Just static. His auto emergency transmitter should be on full blast. I'm tuned to all Pegasus frequencies, sir. So are the automatic relays on Earth. Good. This must be Chapman's ship. What else can it be? Captain Beecher and Lieutenant White are to report to the briefing room immediately and stand by for takeoff. Now report immediately any news or anything unusual on your radio and radar relay. Yes, sir. Who 
rescue ship is in the countdown phase, sir. They're waiting for your final operation orders. Water system ready. Put me through to the captain of the rescue ship on launching. Yes, sir. Beecher, this is Lansfield. Yes, Colonel. Beecher, your final instructions are being teletyped on your recorder. Yes, sir. As you know, something unusual must have happened to Chapman and McCormick. And I don't mind telling you that it's of greatest importance to space travel that we find out exactly what happened to these two men. So blast off and good luck. We'll do our best, Colonel. Base one. Pegasus four to Luna Base One. This is Captain Beecher. Over. Luna Base One to Pegasus Four. We read you, Captain Beecher. Good work. Stand by for Colonel Lansfield. Beecher, how are they? They're not. I mean, there's no one on board. There isn't a sign of life. Two men just don't get up and walk off a rocket in the middle of space? No, sir. Then what the devil? Chapman recorded a final message, sir, but it doesn't make sense. Our repro units are picking it up. We're examining it. Can you bring her in? I'll have to check out the instruments, but I think so. All right, give it a try. White can bring your ship in. Yes, sir. And Beecher. Yes, sir. Good luck. Hello, this is Ro from Oakland. I'm an old school Creature Features fan from a long time ago. Just want to see old school Toxic Avenger in these days and times that we're living in. And God rest, Bob Wilkins' soul. God bless. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. I tell you, you don't want to be in my position. I mean, what a way to spend a, an evening of horror films with these two ninnies. Yeah, he's not, he wants to go. He's been complaining the entire film. I cannot even listen to the film, even though it had that wonderful war scene going on, because he's, he's griping. What's, what's your problem? Normally, here? after letters, I retire to my chambers and read my book. 
Well, you're filling in for Christian Bale. I mean, think about that. You are portraying the man who portrayed Batman. How marvelous. It should, should have some, some, some bearing on his decision to go to his room and smoke a pipe. Indeed. Yeah, he's a chain smoker with that pipe. You never see it on the air, but as soon as he's off the screen. And this one, she's unleashed the Kraken. You know, have you come up with a name for that thing yet? You're not very chatty tonight, are you? Well, I think you should name him Preston. Preston the Kraken. Preston the Kraken. It'd be a good name for a Kraken, right? No. No. All right, so uh, Livingston, do you want to go? You can go if you want to. I mean, I'm going to send you off with a bunch of guilt, but uh, you can go. I shall remain. See, he's really a nice guy if you just kind of prod him a little bit. All right, well, let's get back to this film, and when we come back, um, Tangela's going to tell us something. I don't know what, but it's going to be new. Stay with us. can't work under these conditions. I must know more about the directional flight machine. When the time comes. Well, the time has come. I want to speak to Sesson. And right now. Very well. Father. Frank Chapman wishes to speak with you. Do you want to talk about Liara? That isn't what I came here to discuss. My work has reached a stage and I need to know more about your gravity control. It is too soon. Now, how do we know he's not a spy for the Solarites? You are too distrusting, Heron. All right. You may see it. density of our planet made it possible for us to advance gravity and therefore anti-gravity theories. It's beyond me. Einstein was working on this problem, but he died before he could complete his investigations. What causes Rayton's high density? The atoms on this planet have narrower electronic orbits than the atoms on most other planets. The smaller they become, easier it is for us to control and take advantage of positive and negative gravity. But why is Rayton getting smaller? This planet is slowly using up the energy that holds the atomic particles together. You mean you might disintegrate into nothing? Yes, someday. But it will not be in our time. Well, I guess it's the same as on Earth. We don't seem to worry that our sun might be cooling off in many millions of years. Yeah, the danger for us is that sudden bursts of concentrated heat directed on our ray tongue might suddenly speed up the process of time. You think that's possible? And we have enemies who want our knowledge of gravity and who know our weakness. You're expecting an attack? When you have enemies, you always expect an attack. time I've had a chance to talk to you alone. How is 
is that you're more different than the others. Well, I don't mean your silence. I, I mean you're warmer, uh, more sensitive. Well, that wasn't really a question, because I know you can't answer. I just wanted you to know how I feel. It's a strange world. I don't want to hurt Leah. You don't either. I have charges to make against the Earthman Chapman. He is imposing himself both on Liara, your daughter, and the mute girl, Zeta. Now, this is an insult to Liara. You know I love her. And a direct insult to me. I am asking, rather, I am demanding your permission to challenge him to the duel. sent for me? Yes. I have reports about you that are not good. That you're causing much trouble. What am I supposed to have done now? You are forcing your attentions on Liara. And then on the mute girl, Zeta. That's not true. Why don't you ask them? He lies, Siren. Is it true? Has he forced himself or his attentions upon you? Why would she admit it? Perhaps she's afraid of it. Being mute, she's unable to defend herself. Maybe she's protecting me. Listen, I'm not going to be put on trial or questioned by you or anyone else for something I haven't done. You know, buddy, I don't like you. Maybe it's a carryover from Earth and not good taste. But I'd like to hang one on you. Chapman, Harren has challenged you to the duel of Brayton. Do you accept his challenge? A duel for what? What kind of a duel? This guy doesn't look very honest to me. A duel of bravery. You know, Mr. Sesson, maybe this duel business is a good idea. It might clear the air a little. So how do we go about it? Aaron, you know the rules for the duel of Rayta. But for him, I'll have to explain and show the results. Chapman, come here. Those are gravity plates that we've had placed here. Their intensity is so high that any object or any person placed on any one of them would immediately disintegrate. Here, let me show you. is one of physical strength and skill. You will use this rod and attempt to push your opponent on top of one of the gravity plates. You saw what happened to the rock. Put the combat rod in position. At my signal, you will start the duel. There can be no quarter called and no quarter given. The fate of the victim is in the hands of the victor. The moment has come. At my light signal, you will proceed.
Never did. Didn't you kill him? I didn't want to. I don't believe in it. In this case, killing him would have accomplished nothing. But Heron wouldn't have shown you mercy. He'd have killed you because he wants me. But I don't love him. I love you. If you'd felt anything for either one of us, you could have stopped this duel. What? You know what I think? I think you were waiting to see which one of us won and then take the one that was left over. What? No, Leah, I don't love you. I don't even know if I like you. But let me tell you this. You can't make someone love you. It's got to come naturally. You, you can't force it, you can't command it. If you do that, you'll never find it. Oh, this, this whole thing is, is like a nightmare to me. I miss my people. Well, I've got to make some attempt to get back. And if you feel anything for me, you'll try to help me. Well, perhaps you're right. Maybe I can help you. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. understand your somewhat quaint language if I were on your earth a little. Why don't you kill me? You didn't kill me. You had the chance. Well, what about the knife? This isn't exactly what I'd call a friendly visit. You help me. I have a plan whereby I might help you to leave our planet. Perhaps it will work. I don't see how this is possible. What about my size? I inspected your giant suit. And the oxygen tank holds air from your own world. Now, isn't that right? Yes, of course, but why? No, never mind that. It's not important. You see, the whole plan is based on the theory that your people are searching for you. Now, I must get you back before they attempt to find you here. I know they've been searching and will eventually zero in on this planet. I think I can get you back in time. Yes, but... Uh... You're doing this because of Liara, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm in love with her. I don't think she loves me yet, but... Uh, perhaps with you gone, she will see things in more realistic light in time. Well, how can we get my suit into the open? I have some men I can trust. Incessant? No. You must never know. Otherwise, we both will be put to death. Two nights a week, I'm alone. In complete charge of the master control set. Can one man handle it? Yeah. And on one of those nights in the near future, while Sesame is sleeping, I will maneuver Rayton within a distance of your Earth's moon. You think they'll be able to see us? Precisely. They will investigate and find you. Go with it. What is this? What's happening? The 
Siren means we're being attacked. Attacked by whom? Attacked by whom? The Solarites. We've been here too long. They've discovered our position. Who are the Solarites? I've no time to explain. I must help Cecil. What will this do to our plans? We must fight this off or no one will have any plans. Is everyone underground? Yes. Let me go. for the moment, but I fear they won't give up so easily. Safe for the moment? Well, who are these solarites anyhow? They're from a sun satellite. For generations, they've been after our universal gravity control because they want to avoid being pulled into the sun. If we don't stop them, they'll eventually attack your Earth. Liara, show him the prisoner. Prisoner? Come. during the last war. The only one of their monsters that didn't die in the attack. When did this attack take place? Several years ago, when Zetha was a little girl. That's when she lost her voice. What makes those rocks disintegrate? It's as if they were hitting some invisible wall. That's exactly what it is. The monster is so strong that he can smash in the ordinary structure. Now, what you call an invisible wall is really another way that we use our gravitational control. Now, by using a high magnetic field, we can lock molecules so closely together that they form a solid wall. Make a big hit at MIT. Where? One of Earth's more advanced centers of learning. I only hope your wall will, will hold him in check. Yes. He could kill us all if he escaped life on other planets. And we were always wondering if ours was the only one so blessed. There are many inhabited worlds, but only these fire people bother us. We have been sighted by the enemy. They are forming a concentrated attack pattern six, vernier index one, two. And six? They never attacked on that one before. What are we going to do? We must try to break up the attack. two things. Outrun them or fight them. Well, breaking up a formation is one thing, but how can you fight them? Do you have a chance? We have to settle that once and for all. Living in constant danger isn't worthy of us. But don't forget, we 
They still have the gravity control. The greatest danger to us is the high-intensity heat bomb. That's right. They have enough concentrated heat to blow up our planet instantly. What would you do? I would fight. And you? Fight. Right. That's exactly my decision. Prepare for battle. Sharp acceleration for attack position. Maneuver so that we face the enemy when they attack. Heron, alert our units to be ready for frontal attack. All units, prepare for frontal attack. Activate the gravity curtain. Oh, it was a magnificent victory. <laughs> But I'm deeply plagued with regret when I'm forced to destroy. If it wasn't them, it would have been you. Perhaps you are right. You're a wise chaplain. One day you and Harren will lead our people. Well, I'm honored and grateful, I but... will teach him all he needs to know. Zeta. She went to sleep early. Sleep? I'm very tired. Perhaps the battle was too much of a strain on me. Good night. Good sleep night, well, Sasson. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, Livingston, I can use my pants as a base. Oh, wonderful. No, it's it's like a large stand-up bass, but I'm a sit-down, plain, stand-up bass man. There's only one string. Well, you know, I, I use different tension to get different notes. All right, enough with my pants. Let's talk about this film. So, uh, did you know that Richard Keel is in this film? He's the one that plays the monster. And he was Jaws in, uh, the what's the James Bond film called? Moonraker. Moonraker and the spy who loved him. And the spy who loved him.
Not our director. It's a spy who loved me. James Bond. You. The title was The Spy Who Loved Me. The Spy Did Not Love You. The spy Loved James Bond. <sighs> or The Spy Is James Bond and He Loved Somebody Else. I don't know. Who cares? All right. And uh, so that's uh, an interesting fact that uh, maybe you never knew before. But uh, you cannot tell it's Richard Keel because he's got that brain head thing on. It's a nice costume for 1961. I, I thought it was rather frightening. Who knows? I'm easily frightened. Oh, you brought out the ugly baby again. My goodness. Let me see this thing. Oh, come on. Let me see it. Come on. It's family night. Let me hold the baby. Have, have, have you seen this? It's, it's hideous. It's like, it looks real. But you know, it's like a ventriloquist dummy. It's like, hello, Mr. Livingston. Hello, Mr. Livingston. You should, you should like wire up the jaw to- I need that you know. picture in my mind. No, 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 no. it's my ventriloquist dummy. It's like, no, this is fine. Look, it could go, oh no, oh no, oh no. She's no fun. You know, you'd be a good ventriloquist because your lips never move. All right, well, I'm getting bored with these two. You know, we need to do a phone in thing. I'm going to put a telephone here and we're going to start a phone in thing and you guys can call us when we're on the air and you can you can have a conversation with me because these two it's like talking to a wall like a wall with like moving shelves and things but it's still like talking to a wall we're here every day unfortunately 24 7 right right we don't get out much all right so what do you say we uh finish up this film let's say we do yes. that Yes, we're going to finish up the film, and when we come back, we're going to like, I don't know, he's going to tell us about uh, the Chateaubriand, I think. See you soon.
was that? It's over there. I think it was a solarite. Are you all right? I... What happened? I don't know. Was it the solarite? Did I... you see him? It was terrible. through that corridor. It's shorter. Right. But be careful. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. Oh, Heron. Zeta, are you all right? He will be all right. Liara is with him. I'm glad. You still wish to return to your world? Yes, but... Well, then tonight's the best time. See, the chaos of battle has brought us closer to your moon than we've ever been. It'll be a simple task to maneuver Raton slowly and steadily even closer, and the risk will not be so great because the travel time will be short. And we'll be well within the range of moon's radar. Yes, but we cannot go unnoticed. Now, as soon as we're within range of your moon, my men will carry your suit out into the open. If your people come to investigate, we'll pull them into our gravity and direct their landing. Meanwhile, you will enter your suit, seal it up, so that you're not exposed to our atmosphere and, while well, the rest you know. Where shall I meet you? In the control chamber. Someone will come for you. Zeta. It's you. Yes, Frank Chapman. But you can talk. From my fright, when I thought you were going to be killed, something happened. And after I screamed, I found I was able to speak. Zepha. I have many things to say to you, Frank Jack. It's so wonderful you being able to talk. And I have so many things to say to you. Oh, everything has been terrible. You're so lovely. Such an adorable little face. Isn't that strange? Here in this place, I found perhaps what I've been looking for all my life. And I must leave. Although everything within me wants to stay. My solemn duty to leave. You understand that, don't you? Frank Chapman, I've been in love with you since the first time I saw you. And I've never been able to speak a word of it until now. But as I know, my love for you is so strong. So 
I also know that you will leave. I must leave. shall be close enough for you to be found. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Hair styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. Rocket ship 380 to Luna Base 1. Over. Radar has just picked up a giant asteroid. Identity unknown. Cannot find any record of it in the space charts. The Phantom Planet. Give us exact position of asteroid. Nine degrees in northern cluster field. And I have an order from Colonel Lansfield. You are to land on this asteroid and send White to investigate. I... I hope you will find happiness back with your people. You would be my happiness. You're over there. Frank Chapman, please. You must take the stone. It will be a good luck charm. Hold on to it. It will help you to go back safely to your people. Keep it. And remember, Mac. I love you. Yes, Ada. I'll keep it forever. Just confirmed it. A rocket similar to yours is heading in our direction. I hope it won't crash. <laughs> Don't worry. I have the best men on gravitation control. And I have another man who's coming to help me turn on the oxygen tanks as soon as you're in your suit. Thank you, Han. You know, we've become friends here. Good friends. We would have become friends anywhere. Your planet or my Earth. I wish you and Liara much happiness.
White to Beecher. Come in, White. I found Chapman. He's alive. But there's no trace of McConan. Where's McConan? He's dead. He's gone. No, Captain, I can handle him alone. You know, Frank, you're a lucky guy. This is a wandering planet. Could have carried you anywhere. I'm sure glad we found you. Jason. Where is she? What you need is a rest. immediate takeoff. How do you feel, Chapman? I don't know. I don't understand. It's unbelievable. We'll get you back to moon base for a thorough examination. Do you think you're hurt? I don't think so. You must have been knocked out for quite a while. Must have been dreaming. Quite possible you were delirious. The shock of the crash landing of your ship. Ray's gone. But I just left safe in hand. She had such an adorable little face. Rockets ready for firing. Stand by for countdown. The gravity of this planetoid is very strong. We'll need every bit of thrust for our takeoff. Don't worry. I know we're going to make it. Start your countdown. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And that brings the curtain down on the Phantom Planet. What do you think of the film, Livingston? I thought it was rather pedestrian. Well, I think that hat is rather fetching. Yeah, he uh, he he only wears like these little beret hats. So to see him in a in a different chapeau is quite entertaining. But you know, back to the film. Um, how did he get back to his regular size? Deep breaths. The oxygen. 
it's a special thing. You know, I it's very difficult to have a conversation with you with silly hats. So uh, yes, I understand. No, it looks it, actually that one looks good on you, but I think I think she needs to find a larger size. You need to go to oh, there you go. Now you got to put the chin strap on him. Put the chin strap on, or else it's gonna fall I, off I'd his head. I'd rather not. Uh, you, you you would not do very well in a haberdashery, Tangela. All right, well... Your fingers uh, are cold. Her hands are cold? Yes. Well, it's, the entire existence is cold. All right, well, uh, sorry we did not have a fancy guest for you tonight, but uh, we do have a fancy Livingston, which is almost as good. He's not Christian Bale, but... Uh, you kind of look like an Oompa Loompa right now. I like this one. Keep let's keep this one on for a while. Either that, or he looks like a, you know, a, a, a British judge who uncurled his hair, right? Or no, maybe he looks like Tangella. I think we'll call you Livingston Tangella. It's rather dusty. Yeah, it's a clean mop. I saw it buy it. All right. Well, as far as you guys go, thank you so much for watching our half show, and uh, hopefully next week we're going to have a an actual guest and not these two ninnies and uh, we'll have a different movie as well but uh, you know who knows so you have a wonderful night a wonderful tomorrow and spend some time with the ones you love and we'll see you next week so Livingston I think next time we find ourselves in this predicament of not having a guest we should have you in the host chair and I'll sit in the guest chair I'd rather go to a rodeo